Hey, welcome to Album April 2023. It's April 1st, and today I listen to Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins. This was randomly chosen to be the first album I reviewed this month, by the way. Last year, there were several albums from the 90s. This is the only 90s album of all 30 I'm listening to this month. But considering the fact that it's about as long as three average albums, I think that we have enough 90s just from this album alone. This is by far the longest album slated for review this month at two hours. There's certainly a lot to dissect here, so let's start out with the questions. First question, what was my first impression of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness? For the sake of brevity, I'll just call it Melancholy. My first impression really had to do with the lead singer and lead songwriter of Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan. I'll put this out there right away. I think that Billy Corgan is a brilliant songwriter. From a compositional standpoint, most of the songs on this album are really good. It's a little simplistic when it comes to lyricism, but that's not really a problem given what types of songs these are. I think that Billy Corgan is an incredibly talented songwriter, and then we get to him singing. I'm pretty sure that this is him like putting on a voice, but if it's not, I'm sorry I made that assumption, but just like, it's, it's very particular, it's very nasally. Objectively, it's not bad, I mean it's not good either, but it's not horrible, and it can absolutely work given the right song. And a lot of the grungier songs in this album, like Bullet with Butterfly Wings, the voice works well. But in a lot of the slower, prettier songs, it almost sounds like the singing is fighting with the composition. Compare this to say like the late Chester Bennington from Linkin Park. Yes, he has that very harsh, very rough, like almost screamo sounding voice, but he also can make it a lot smoother and more melodic. I have listened to a lot of Billy Corgan singing today and I didn't really get that from him. Most of the time it's not a problem, but almost all the time it's something that I can't not notice. And next we got the question of what is my favorite song from Melancholy? I mean, if I'm looking at it objectively, the best song from this album is probably one of the more consistent ones, like By Starlight or Galapagos or even the eponymous instrumental at the very beginning. But there is no song from this album that even comes close to reaching the same highs as Tonight Tonight. It would feel like I'm lying if I said that Tonight Tonight wasn't my favorite song from this album, but it is also probably the most frustrating. The reason why I say that is that the composition and instrumentation is gorgeous like honestly from my perspective this is like 10 out of 10 production it's big and it's sweeping and it's so beautiful and directly contrasting to that is billy corgan singing next to music that is so smooth and polished he almost sounds like a cartoon character i'm pretty sure i brought this up when i was reviewing wonderwall last year but like it almost feels like miss potential because the production and the singing don't go together Tonight Tonight is a great song the way it is, but if it had a different singer, another one of those alt-rock lead singers from the time like Johnny Resnick or Shirley Manson, this would have been one of the best songs in the 90s. Tonight Tonight is by no means the only good song from this album though. If I look at the track list, there's a bunch I would recommend besides the ones I already mentioned. You also got other good ones like Here Is No Why, Muzzle, In The Arms Of Sleep, 1979, we Only Come Out at Night was pretty catchy. Beautiful definitely earns its title. Farewell and Good Night was a great way to end the album. And I mean, I thought that Lily was very pretty until I realized it's about a stalker. There are a lot of good and great songs from this album, but Tonight Tonight is like a step above. And on the flip side, were there any songs from this album that I didn't like? Yes, there were. I wasn't fond of Love. I wasn't fond of XYU, but... I'd say that the only song I would give a hard pass to is Tales of a Scorched Earth. It's just not my thing. I'm not a fan of using distortion, especially to the level that they used it in that song. But hey, it's 28 songs. Even with some of the best bands of all time, it's not like they're all going to be winners. And finally, do I think this album holds up? Yes, I do. I do think it could have been a lot shorter. Like, they could have cut out probably up to half of these songs. I always think it's better to leave them wanting more. But, on the other hand, with so many songs, it kind of allows the band to explore pretty much every side of 90s alt-rock. This might be the most 90s album I've ever heard in my life. You want grunge? They got grunge. You want something more rootsy? They got that too. You want more synth? They have it. 
It's a 28-sided die of 90s alt-rock. It's certainly not a flawless album, and I still don't completely vibe with Billy Corgan's singing, but I can acknowledge that it is very good for what it is. I mean, if you like 90s alt-rock, odds are there's going to be a few songs in this album you really like. Okay, one down, 29 to go. I'll see you tomorrow.